Robert the Bruce is the main character in the new Netflix movie called The Outlaw King. And in this video, I want to ask the question, what languages did Robert the Bruce speak? As this is the subject of some debate. So first of all, I'd like to take a look at the linguistic situation in the years up to the reign of Robert the Bruce. Now, the first language we know of in Scotland is the common Brythonic language. This was a P-Celtic language and the ancestor of Welsh, Cornish and Breton, as well as possibly others. Now, one of the most important peoples in Northern Scotland in the Highlands were the Picts, and their language is a bit of a mystery. I've got a video about this if you're interested, but it's thought that it was related to the common Brythonic language. Now, this was a Celtic language. The other branch of the Celtic languages in uh, the British Isles at this time were the Q-Celtic languages, or Godelic, which was spoken in Ireland. Now, we're not entirely sure when this language came to Scotland. Some estimates put it as early as the 2nd century AD, others even go to BC, so before Christ, um, and others have it as a little bit later, but there definitely was a spread of the Godelic language into the southwest of Scotland with the Kingdom of Dol Riada, for example. But in AD 900, the Kingdom of Alapa, or Alba, was created under the kingship of Kenneth MacAlpin, and it's thought that he probably had roots in both the Pictish and the Dol Riadan lines, but it was the Gallic language that took over, and the Pictish language seems to have disappeared completely from Scotland, which is why today some areas of Scotland still speak Gallic as a first language. Now as well, the Old English language was a Germanic language brought in by the Anglo-Saxons at some point in the early 6th century. And this language also spread into the southeast of Scotland, the area around Edinburgh and some parts of the borders, because of the expansion of the Northumbrian. Northumbria is the best! In 1066, the Normans invaded England and brought with them their Norman dialect of the French language and changed the way we speak English forever, bringing in the end of the era of Old English and kickstarting what would become the new language of Middle English. Now these changes were felt more in the south of the country, especially after the Great Vowel Shift of 1350, but because this is after our time I can't really talk about this yet, because Robert the Bruce was before then. However there were other vowel shifts which occurred in the north of the country, and included those areas that had been speaking the Old English language in Scotland. Now this gave rise to the language of Scots. There is some debate as to how different this was, and it certainly is very related to the northern dialects of um, what would have been Middle English at that time, which retained close relations to Scots. Now, Scots as well was influenced by a lot of Flemish people coming in. Wait, did the Flemish count? Is that a thing? They're, oh, oh, they were also Dutchmen? Oh, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> With the Norman conquest, the aristocracy that had been Anglo-Saxon changed its nature to a Norman one, and lots of these Norman families like the Fitzgeralds, the Percys, the Darcys, the De Vreux, and um, also in Scotland, importantly, the Balliols and the De Bruce family, which became obviously the Bruces, were imported into England and later imposed on the Welsh. Now, Scotland was never actually conquered by the Normans as such, but their King David did actually invite a lot of Normans over the border to settle and to build, of course, the famous castles which they then did, and which would become rather annoying for later Scottish e efforts at independence. Now as well, it's interesting because you have certain Scotsmen who were both Norman and Gallic, as we can see by certain earls, one of which called himself both Roland, which is a French name, but also Lochlan, which is obviously a Gallic name. So there were various identities in Scotland at this time, and being of one didn't necessarily mean you couldn't be of another, which will be important for Robert the Bruce. Now as well, we have to look at, obviously I mentioned the common Brythonic language at the start of the video, there was a kingdom called Strathclyde, or Dumbarton, or Alt Clut, or Estrad Clut, at various points in its history, and this continued on into the early Middle Ages until it was enveloped by the kingdom of Alapa, and they did actually speak a P-Celtic language, so related to Welsh, there for quite some time and into the early Middle Ages, and it has been suggested that this may have been the first language of William Wallace, although we'll talk about that in a different video. Now if we look at the very north of Scotland to uh, the Isles for instance, you obviously had a Norwegian influence there, and they brought along their Old West Norse language. Now there's been fairly little impact on the Gallic language by the Old West Norse language, and it's thought that these Norsemen who did come up, the Hiberno-Norse, soon started to speak Gallic as a first language and forgot Old Norse. However, in places where there was um, genetically provable that there was a great shift in population, like for example Orkney and Shetland and the very north of the Scottish mainland, an area called Caithness, 
There was actually another language spoken called Norn, which was spoken into the 19th century before it was subsumed by Scots, although this is far to the north of where Robert the Bruce is thought to ever have come. So it's not going to be important for this video, although if you're interested, leave me a comment and I'll make another video looking at Norn in some detail. Finally as well, I guess you could say that English would be, can be considered as another language. Interestingly enough, Scots was first referred to as English um, because it was the language of the Angles who were the Northumbrians, so that was to differentiate it between the uh, Gallic language being spoken by many of the others in Scotland at the time and the French language being spoken by the aristocracy. Now obviously the English had been the Anglo-Saxons until the Normans arrived and French would remain a language of the aristocracy so a lot of the common foot soldiers and the archers who were generally of the lower ranks um, of the English armies that came to Scotland to invade would have been English speaking whereas the commanders and the kings and such they would be French speaking at the time so I guess we can say English um, could be considered a different language obviously I mentioned Scots before which really is just the northern equivalent of the middle English language that developed um, and they would probably be able to understand each other without too many issues they might think that the um, the Scots speakers had a bit of a funny accent and used some words that they were unfamiliar with um, as well as some noises that would have been a bit unfamiliar because of the old Flemish and the ch and things I'm not sure whether that was retained in Middle English as such it started to drop out so what language did Robert the Bruce speak now that we've looked at this now I'm actually going to be very annoying and to pause the video right here and to announce that I am starting my own merchandise. Yes, it's that time of year and I thought why not have some merchandise for the new year. I have a few designs for myself which I think that you guys might like and I'll put it to a vote. But I thought why not let you guys design some stuff for me because you're all incredibly creative. I found this out when I was doing my banner competition and such. So I thought I'd open it up to you guys to have a look if you guys wanted to design me some stuff. So what I was thinking was sort of t-shirts, uh, maybe some hoodies, uh, as well as posters, maybe phone cases, that kind of thing, which you can all send in to me at historywithhilbert at gmail.com, as well as on any of my social media, so there's Facebook, uh, there's Twitter, you know, I'm on Patreon as well, and that kind of thing. So you can all send it to me there. Um, just let me know if you want it to be on a t-shirt, or a hoodie, or a phone case, or a poster, or anything, or all of them if it's just a nice design. You know really what I'm looking for. Obviously, if you send this to me, I'll put it up for the vote, and if there's a couple that I really like, I'll probably just push them through um, and if you do send them in obviously you then transfer the ownership of that design over to me and I'll be letting you guys know the winners of this competition I'll have a few more little shout outs of it so I get the word around but yeah just uh, email in any designs that you'd like for some history with Hilbert merch so one way we can answer this question is by looking at the parts of the British Isles that were controlled by the Bruce's family so within England he controlled large parts of the north actually of Durham and Yorkshire and in the southeast, he uh, controlled areas of Essex and Middlesex, that's the Bruce family. Now, within Scotland, he controlled in the borders the region of Annadale, in Galloway, the area of Carrick, and to the northeast, he controlled Aberdeenshire as well, and also Antrim in the north of Ireland. Now, it's interesting because his mother was actually a countess, which I'll get onto soon, and she very likely spoke Gaelic as a first language, whereas his father was one of these new Anglo-Norman earls that came in, also called Robert de Bruce, so like Robert the Bruce. Again, his grandfather is also called Robert. It's clearly a family name here. Um, and so it's likely that he spoke French. In fact, it would be really quite silly if he didn't speak French because that was the language of the aristocracy at the time uh, and the language of literature at the time as well. So it's very likely he spoke French. We have more evidence for this because... He is thought to have gone down to London to attend the court of Edward I when he was a young man with his father. Obviously that court functioned entirely in French, so it would be silly if he went down there and didn't know any French because he wouldn't be able to understand anything. Um, also we have legends saying that when he was a hideout out in the Scottish Highlands and other areas, he would entertain his followers by reading from French literature and reciting French poems. The example here he probably didn't read from because it's the Song of Dermot and the Earl. I recently studied this, um, telling the story of the Norman invasion of Ireland with people like Jimich McMurchu and Ruri O'Conchur and Stephen Fitzgerald and all of these various characters. So he probably didn't read that one, but it's just an example of Anglo-Norman poetry that I know. And it's also actually a very nice poem and very interesting to see the difference between that and more modern French because this is ultimately the language that influenced English a lot from Old English. So I'll leave a link to a full copy of that text below if you're interested. Um, as well, because it was a language of learning, he probably had some grasp of Latin as well because this was also used for writing, for instance, annals, which are sort of yearly records at the time. They're mostly in Latin. Um, that would later be replaced by Scots in Scotland and uh, Middle English in England. 
English in English in England. Um, and of course, this was also the language of the church. Um, and the nobility would generally have some grasp of Latin. So we're fairly sure he will have had some grasp of Latin, as well as probably a better grasp on uh, Anglo-Norman French. Now, his mother, as I mentioned, was called Marjorie, and she was the Countess of Carrick, which is interesting because that meant that his mother actually outranked his father. But because of the way it worked at the time, his father, when he married Marjorie, there's a great story that he came back from crusading, and that she locked him in a tower until he agreed to marry her. She was that smitten with him. Whether that's true or not, I have no idea, but it's a funny story nonetheless. Um, and it's interesting because she outranked his father, but when they married, his father took on the role of the Count of Carrick in her her name um, and the interesting thing is that she was from Carrick which is this region in Galloway and Galloway until the late Middle Ages was actually Gallic speaking as a region so it's thought that she actually will have spoken Gallic if not as a first language but she definitely will have spoken that language and we're not entirely sure how much of a role she had in bringing up Robert but we're fairly certain that he was born there at Turnberry Castle which was her you know home estate there and if he, she did have much of an upbringing um, much of a role in his upbringing then it's likely that he will have taken on his mother tongue as this was generally something that happened that the language of the mother would be passed on to the child that's for instance why we have certain English kings speaking Occitan because their mothers were from the south of France at this time Richard the Lionheart for instance although he really never went to the south of France um, as well, well, how we can infer that Robert the Bruce likely spoke Gaelic was that his biggest allies, two of them being Neil Campbell and also Angus Og of the Isles, this was a MacDonald, these were both Gaelic speaking. Obviously the Campbells are from Argyllshire, this was part of Dol Reader, had been, and this was certainly a Gaelic speaking area at the time. The MacDonalds from the Isles, also a Gaelic speaking area. And these were his largest allies, and often allies worked along linguistic lines. You have, if you can speak someone's language, it's much easier to forge an alliance with that person, especially when you're going to war against other people. And we're also told that at the Battle of Bannockburn, I've seen this in various places, but I haven't actually found the primary source, so I'm guessing they have it from a primary source, but don't quote me on this, is that in the final battle, well, I say the final battle, the big important battle for Robert the Bruce's period, Bannockburn in 1314, that he led the men of Argyll and the Isles in battle. And it's likely, again, that yeah, and there's another story that says that when they arrived on the battlefield, Robert the Bruce greets them with this classic Gallic phrase. So I think there is some credence to this, that he would be leading the men that he best understood. And this had been the backbone of his army since 1306, since being an outlaw. Um, these Gallic speaking areas. It's also there where he flees when he loses his initial push against the English to this Gallic speaking region uh, of the Isles and the Highlands. And also Rathlin Island, which is where the legendary story of the spider takes place. That also was a Gallic speaking area. So it's likely that he knew Gallic fairly well if he wasn't a fluent speaker or if it wasn't his native language, actually. Apart from Carrick, he also spent a considerable amount of his childhood in the border region of Annandale. And the language of Annandale, as you can probably infer, was this Scots form of Middle English, as this had been an area that had been controlled by the Northumbrians, and this was really a largely feudalized area by the 14th century. Now, this is actually interesting because it seems that Scots seems to have become somewhat of a lingua franca, in Scotland at the time because you obviously had various people speaking various languages. In the north and in the highlands and in Galloway you had um, obviously Gallic speakers, you also had this new Norman aristocracy uh, with more coming in with the English invasions, they were speaking French and in this area you also had Scots speakers. So it seems that Scots did become sort of a more modular language that could be used by various peoples especially in the south and this would become rather than Gallic the language of administration for the later Scottish kings at the time as well. And it's also in this region that you had a mix of all three, so it's thought that Robert the Bruce likely had a grasp of the Scots language, um, also because it made communicating with the English a lot easier. And this is actually a poem about Robert the Bruce from later in the 14th century after his death, telling the story of how he kills um, Robert de Bohun, who is this uh, Norman knight who comes up and tries to kill him before the Battle of Bannockburn, but he ends him rightly with his axe at the time. And this is obviously in Scots, and later you get a lot more um, you know, sources in Scots and, and various annals that switch from Latin, as I mentioned, to the Scots language in Scotland, this Middle English language. 
Um, as well, then it's likely that he had some grasp of the English language. Of course, Scots and English um, and Middle English both came from the same root of Old English, just Scots was the northern form and then it developed separately with influence from Flemish and Dutch uh, and other influences and less French influence, whereas Middle English got more French influence and didn't have the Flemish and Dutch influence, which is sort of how they grew apart in the long run. So, what do you think? How many languages do you think that Robert the Bruce spoke? Um, that's my battery about to die, so let's make this a quick intro. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. Do let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Would you like to see more videos about this period? I'm not too much of an expert on it, but I know a bit about the languages and things like that, and I find it very interesting nonetheless. So, if you'd like, you can support me on Patreon. Please do get stuck in with the uh, designing stuff on Redbubble. I'd really appreciate that. Um, and give me a thumbs up. Let, let me know anything extra in the comments below. I love reading your guys' comments, especially when there's more information. Correct any mistakes that I made, because there were probably a few, because I'm not an expert on this uh, period at all. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to share it with your friends, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Oh, also, don't forget to check out uh, Outlaw King. Great film, and also on the BBC, if you can get it, there was a Neil Oliver documentary called Rise of Clans. Uh, the first episode being about Robert the Bruce and his fleeing into the Highlands and the Isles and how we used clan warfare to defeat the English, which I thought was very interesting, if you can. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again very soon.